Um, welcome to session 6B uh, of making your final work, uh, conversion and onboarding. Uh, a little fast recap, customer journey, mapping, measurement plan, implementing uh, measurements and optimizing the customer journey. Um, KPIs, conversion rate optimization and building your marketing stack. Uh, always be testing every aspect of your uh, customer journey um, as far as time uh, uh, allows. Um, content marketing, um, different content at different stages for uh, uh, different personas, uh, especially in the uh, uh, pre-conversion stages. Um, legal GDPR, Get a timestamp for every permission, every channel, and the reason why people provided your uh, an opt-in to communicate with them. Um, Google Analytics and Tag Manager, use filters and views to exclude your IP addresses and then and other internal users' goals to measure uh, steps. Um, UTM tracking for external traffic, event tracking for uh, on-site or in-app behavior. Uh, segments to uh, follow certain groups of behavior, the converters, the organic traffic, traffic from a certain campaign, etc. Um, SEO, off-page and on-page, link building, building authority, off-page, um, on-topic links within the content are the most important with the right anchor text and uh, on-page site speed, security, mobile-friendly, internal link structure, and microdata um, are the most important aspects. And uh, concerning content, the right keywords, putting the keywords always uh, uh, in front of the uh, title and description tag, use them in your header tags, uh, use alternatives and synonyms, um, always add uh, three or more uh, images, and uh, one or more uh, videos to your uh, pages, and preferably uh, two or three of really relevant outbound links. App marketing, we talked to them, uh, uh, about it. Uh, traffic sources, if you don't send them to an, uh, with a, to an app store campaign or through branded campaigns, you get uh, App Store traffic, yeah, of course, that's also uh, a way, but just normal communication channels, uh, people will go to your website from that point on to the App Store, and from that point, will install your app for a part. And if you want to uh, push them through the funnel, you need to orchestrate your messaging because else you're a little bit wild. Um, landing page optimization. The most important uh, uh, say bottleneck of uh, your entire marketing um, efforts, everything. Um, headers, uh, nice images, testimonials, reviews, uh, clear call to action, um, and a test with uh, uh, copywriting in your uh, your value proposition because. Uh, Clear communication, especially uh, with text, is a uh, uh, really a difficult job. Some copywriters really uh, can do a good job, but uh, most people find it hard to have a nice and also persuasive lines of text. Trials, um, if you need to, to call them, because uh, probably that will increase your conversion rates uh, uh, very much. Of course, that's more for uh, B2B or some uh, high, uh, not high, but not uh, five euros per month. So we're really a few uh, tens of uh, pounds or euros or dollars per month. Um, it's uh, easy to uh, create an outbound call and to uh, explain them the product. Will um, will triple, uh, quadruple your uh, conversion rate. Um, no uh, credit card details in the trial stage. Social media, uh, 
the place to be for um, uh, early stage awareness campaigns and um, communicating with uh, fans and followers. Organic reach is for non-engaging posts, which most posts are quite lo quite low. Uh, expect two, three, four percent. Um, if you have a good engaging post that can uh, climb to uh, 20 to 40 percent, but uh, you will almost never reach 100 percent of your fan base or follower base. Um, for B2B, of course, uh, LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and Quora is really quite big on the B2B. Um, and WhatsApp. Um, Advertising at this moment is not possible, but WhatsApp uh, for business integration in your uh, communication channels is uh, upcoming. Um, that's an option. Deed nurturing. And uh, lead scoring. Uh, here, 18 month cycle. Different traffic sources that are the colors. When, uh, a prospect do, does something and engages with you or your people or your content. Um, you give them points. Uh, try to. That's why you need uh, your Google Analytics uh, in the in the right uh, configuration or your uh, marketing automation platform, so you can uh, see where they are. And uh, when to engage with them and when not, and through which channel. Uh, today, conversion and onboarding. We're going to talk a, bit, a little bit about conversion payment methods, invoicing, guarantees and warrants, return policies, uh, contracts, uh, and then some uh, things about uh, having readable uh, terms and conditions, just uh, not too heavy legal language, but the, so they don't have to hire a lawyer or a solicitor uh, to get through your terms and conditions, but in uh, quite normal, readable, uh, written language. Security standards, uh, especially in B2B, that's uh, more important. Uh, SOC 2 uh, qualifications and that uh, other st standard that uh, other business know in, uh, in the instance like, hey, they really have uh, done a good job with their security. Um, if you're a member of any organizations, both for B2C, uh, like, uh, the consu uh, any consumer organization that has the 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 the, uh, the welfare of uh, consumers at top of mind uh, show their logos. Uh, if you're in B two B, you have a, you need to probably uh, will have or ask for a GDPR processing agreement because there will be some data probably flowing uh, from your customers or prospects. Um, Onboarding, we will talk about the help center, FAQs, product videos, webinars, uh, content, uh, screenshots and chat. Uh, and of course, also process flow. Uh, so when you're actually onboarding them, the content is of course to support onboarding. Um, but you can uh, see like the same with uh, lead nurturing uh, in other centers, uh, onboarding is the same kind of process, like uh, based on what they do, you have to show them the right content or point them to the right content at the right moment. Payment methods. In the UK, uh, over 45% of shoppers have abandoned the purchase because of payment related issues. And 42% of uh, users uh, to pay uh, Users uh, take payment methods into consideration when they decide where to shop. So, um, uh, and the same for me. If I don't shop international for my business uh, in an uh, international setting, if they don't, I, I never uh, pass my credit card details because it's too uh, too tricky. So, if they don't accept PayPal, I'm gone. So, um, it's really something you have to consider. Um, and of course, if you buy a few of you offer in, in store um, purchases, that's not an issue. But uh, I believe on average you pay uh, uh, 25 to 40 percent to uh, uh, Apple or Android, uh, Google. Um, 
Yeah, we, we direct your checkout where relevant uh, to the payment uh, uh, provider or debit card uh, banking instance. Let uh, shoppers pay with different payment options. Make sure your checkout works on different devices. Um, so always, if you build or integrate something, test on a website, different browsers, um, both phones, so iPhone and uh, Android, and uh, also test uh, on the tablet, also Apple and Android. Um, it's also a way to add loyalty, uh, give them points for certain payments or uh, incentivize uh, certain payments like uh, with a credit card, of course, you have to pay a percentage to the credit card company. Uh, you can ask for a, a, a debit card payment. And stay on top of your risk management setup, uh, especially important for B2B. Uh, and when uh, there's a lot of invoicing of other risks involved, um, that you want to have a connection with a credit uh, uh, check party that uh, checks the, the, the credit of the, your partner, business partner. Um, some merchants uh, offer kind of current account facility. So uh, you buy once a month, you buy uh, all the outstanding uh, orders. And of course, uh, if you do a lot of transactions with uh, such a business, um, you will also have some returns, so it get balanced out. And um, uh, once a month, you have to pay. And of course, they all oft, often also offer uh, credit facilities. So that's really something that can increase your conversion rates, especially in e-commerce. In B2B, you also uh, can have a difference between the moment of invoicing and the moment of payment. Um, Think about that you have to be uh, fast, uh, and fast I mean with uh, with uh, sending up reminders if you don't get uh, paid immediately. So you first have to provide a service or a part of your product. The amount of credit days you offer, uh, what you do when they don't pay, for example, close the account or close certain um, uh, functionalities, uh, set up your risk management, uh, and uh, when do you receive the invoice? Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, after the receival of the invoice, the payment terms starts to, uh, the, the credit days start to count, uh, but in other uh, countries, that's a different usage. So you really have to uh, check that, especially with international business. Guarantees a warrant, of course, uh, of course, very logical, but uh, it can increase your conversion rates a lot. So it's really something you have to consider. Uh, money back guarantee, risk-free guarantee, 100% satisfaction, lowest price. Um, you can also uh, offer an extra warranty as an upsell. Uh, some brands offer the possibilities to, uh, to buy extra months or years of warranty for a small amount. Like standard, is, uh, you have a one-year uh, warrant uh, on your product. But you can add an initial two years, total three years for, uh, say, a 10% increase in price. Um, I put a link here on this. Hmm. And here's the, the case. Um, where you can find how they uh, tested it. So uh, this is a test by conversion rate, uh, experts.com. Um, it's a really nice case to read, so I wanted to point it out. Um, return policies uh, can offer also, uh, um, uh, say, uh, can influence your conversion rates. Uh, more important for uh, for uh, for e-commerce, of course, than uh, SaaS, but um, important on the way. Um, 
the use of an interactive returns portal offering prepaid return labels and the ability to look up past purchases, some of the ways online merchants can make the process more durable. So actually it's a, a return center in your uh, account at the merchant. Um, and what also can be uh, uh, interesting or beneficial uh, is uh, if you have to, uh, if, uh, if it's free to return the items. Um, and for some companies, they you have to pay the postal stamp and the the, the boxing yourself. So um, all small um, little small features where you can copy them. Um, of course, a year contract uh, pay up front for a year. It is more a SaaS metric. Uh, or a contract for a year, but pay per month to spread uh, the, 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 the financial load or a contract for a month and pay per month, quite uh, normal. Interesting is what kind of discount you uh, you uh, you offer for, for with, with what kind of contract. Um, because you else you, you of course you want to uh, have them longer, but uh, also your average value per month has to stay in place. But on the other hand, uh, if you have signed up uh, a lot of clients as a 12 month contract, but they do stop uh, using your product after a few months, you get a strange relationship with them or they don't start stop paying. So you have a lot of uh, outstanding debt or, um, they have a, a, a bad feeling about your product and this will uh, come back to you like a boomerang with uh, bad reviews or a uh, bad word of mouth. So it's uh, something you have to look for your own company. It's not one wisdom. Um, and you could send out a flow for, for re-engagement to let them try again if they don't succeed to uh, stop the contract so they don't have to pay anymore or get a return. Uh, but especially if, if you have got a year upfront paid, that will be an issue because uh, paying money back to customers is not something that most companies like to do. Um, onboarding content, well, in general, uh, the bigger you get, the more content you will need. Um, the, 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 the common denominator would be uh, calling it a help center. Of course, we talk about FAQs, uh, product videos. Uh, product video, I mean, how-to videos, like how to uh, set up, how to configure, etc., or how to connect, uh, or how to integrate with something, etc. Uh, you can have... Uh, say weekly webinars, depending on how many uh, customers you sign up, but uh, you can have weekly webinars to uh, for all new customers so they can uh, join together and ask live questions. Um, of course, uh, lessons ed education on screenshots within the, within the articles, uh, step by step explaining what they will see. Um, Taking consideration that um, you don't start writing content the second uh, after you have, uh, uh, of course you do it in a way, but you have to consider that uh, how, how much your product changes in time uh, because you also have to re reproduce for partly of wholly, wholly um, the content you've created. So um, you have to discover your own cadence of change to judge like, uh, uh, does this uh, feature stay for for uh, now or eternity, then we, we're going to develop uh, content for it, or uh, we're not sure yet, or it will change because the, we also have another feature on the roadmap that will change this entire page, etc. Um, Rule of thumb, uh, change every cost of uh, every cost uh, question you ever get from a customer in the piece of content. So uh, if you get an email request like, uh, uh, where can I find uh, this and this functionality? Um, probably other clients also looking for it. So uh, just write a small article with some screenshots about it, like uh, 
and send a link to that customer who asked the question like, hey, you can find it here. And that from then on, other people can also find that answer to the, their question. Um, another thing you can consider is uh, web chat. Uh, when done properly and probably uh, uh, first uh, fast reply. Uh, and secondly, uh, uh, same session uh, 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 solving the problem, so they don't have to get back and uh, etc. Um, but if you can solve it in that same session that they are chatting with you, it can be a really a uh, nice channel for uh, customers to engage with you. Um, also, you have process and flow uh, 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 flows that you uh, for when onboarding. Uh, Product tour, uh, so there's more an optional flow, like they can skip out of it, like, hey, do you want to go to the tour or uh, you want to find your own way? Uh, but you can uh, have a force flow with se screen sequences, like uh, uh, that they have to do before they can uh, go to uh, to the to the starting screen. Uh, visual pointers, trial content, checklist, email support, of course, product analytics and marketing automation flows. We're gonna talk about that a little. Um, product analytics, uh, you can just, or just, uh, uh, same for a website, uh, uh, assuming now everything is on the web or an app. So, um, you can just use Google analytics, uh, focus on the common conversion activities. So, um, what are Common conversion uh, activities. Uh, we have mentioned this before during the trial period, but it's also after the conversion with the onboarding. Uh, things most slash all paying customers do during the trial or during uh, the conversion moment. Um, our definition is what is the minimum of activities a new customer has to complete to experience benefits from your product. And you have also an extended definition. What are the activities that at least 80% of your loyal customers complete? So there's also, of course, an, an, um, a difference between first time paying customers. So for example, if you have a year contract the first year and what all the customers do that uh, stay a customer after that first year, so year two and three and four, uh, what have they done? Um, to get value from your product. And um, there will be some similarities uh, on, amongst all those clients. Um, and you want to make sure that, uh, and in your onboarding and in your first year sequences, uh, all the new customers try to mirror that uh, behavior of your successful customers, because then they also have the biggest chance of becoming uh, successful customers who stay loyal to you. Um, what to watch in your analytics? Of course, uh, usage and logins. So logins, the amount, how often they log in. Uh, usage, like uh, uh, they only view the dashboard or they uh, go deeper. Um, like what do they do uh, within your uh, uh, environment? If you need, for example, need the data import from uh, or data connection uh, or integration, for example, with Google Analytics or any other tool, uh, have they set it up integrations uh, with other tools? So uh, really monitor, like, are they doing the common conversion activities? The main flow you want to uh, for support uh, is, of course, a knowledge center, uh, then uh, send them to email and uh, at the last moment, chat, and you could also call phone afterwards. But um, uh, the cost per contact increases uh, quite a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, chatting, I believe, in a call center agent or a chat agent can have uh, several uh, chat sessions at one time. Uh, larger companies have also first line and second line and sometimes third line uh, of help, technical support, etc. Uh, but there are really people chatting. Uh, of course, you have chatbots. Um, 
but uh, those people haven't found or they haven't looked well and then chat but does offer the solution but if you don't have the content on in your help center that what they're looking for well they need to speak to a person um, if they don't want to wait for example if their website is down or anything else then they really have to contact someone now and solve the problem um, so think about also the urgency of your product uh, how critical your product is in their business process um, with email so the second channel put them through a form flow um, where they will see suggestions from your content library and library so you ask some questions like uh, what department want, do you want to speak what is your problem technical uh, with billing or uh, more in-depth questions and another questions to filter uh, also to send it to the right agent um, but also you can uh, uh, based on what they answered you can uh, ask an engine or a developer to, uh, to get up suggestions from your content library hey was this what you were looking for um, in some cases, people click on it that they're they happy and you don't have to answer an email or start a chat, chat session with them. Email onboarding sequences, of course, welcome series, minimal effort uh, plus general tips for usage, uh, guide them through the common and conversion activities. Uh, and uh, just like with marketing automation, send them serve behavior slash usage based sequences. So. Um, For example, if they uh, if you have a webshop platform and they have to configure, uh, for example, at least uh, for the payment uh, system, um, for they actually can uh, have visitors convert in their webshop, well, make sure that they uh, uh, see all the content uh, that's available um, about setting up your payment methods in the webshop, for example. Um, And here's a, an image from uh, Atlassian. Uh, of course, your official pointers, progress bars, a checklist. Uh, here's integration in one. Um, and you see here, uh, there is a checklist, but also a progress bar and uh, um, They offer several kinds of uh, content now, like watch and overviews for a two minutes uh, view. Um, and they can also click to the next, next step. So they offer in one screen, they offer several ways how they guide users to the, to the process, uh, through the process. Uh, Airtable, database and a spreadsheet in one tool. Um, when signing up, they ask a lot of questions. Um, which they will need later on to create uh, engagement uh, of the uh, right content. And for example, um, sometimes it's uh, nice to preload the content. For example, uh, your free ladies are all from the same app. So you can imagine like, hey, what would happen if we would preload uh, uh, the first uses of the app? like? Uh, with all kinds of clothing, uh, also with bad pictures, not so really nice pictures, but just bad pictures made by somebody in real. So, hey, this is how it would look if you uh, uh, photographed your wardrobe and somewhere you put a button for like empty uh, the demo data and uh, start photographing the real uh, wardrobe. Uh, but the effect will be that they won't land in an empty uh, uh, account and they will see what they will get. Uh, and how they can work with the data, your matching algorithm, etc. So, um, what have to have to? Uh, what kind of alerts do you have to put in place uh, if, with your users? Uh, well, of course, when they're not logging in anymore. Um, if if your service for users demands that, if you if you have a website monitoring service, they don't need to be logged in. Um, but for most servers, they do need to log in for making uh, uses of your product. 
not finishing functions and not returning soon. So if they were, for example, in the process of uh, with the web shop of uh, setting up the Google Analytics account, and they clicked already around, they viewed some help articles, articles and they opened the screen, already filled in their code, but then they left and they didn't came back, say uh, within one working day, and because they, they can have uh, can, can gotten uh, disturbed. Uh, but if they don't come back, well, that's really a moment to reach out and of, hey, uh, they didn't finish a critical activity. What's up? Uh, same with other uh, common conversion activities. Um, so they did start it, but they did not finish it. Visiting the same help page uh, several times in a short time. Um, because uh, that could be a signal that they haven't found a solution for their problem. Yeah, once or twice, uh, especially if it's, a, it's, a, it's a, they need to do some things, uh, for example, like uh, implement the Google Analytics uh, uh, or Google Tag Manager uh, script. Or, uh, but if they uh, you know, watch a page for three, three times or more, well, then you really be have to on your guard, like, hey, is this normal for this page or, uh, do they have a problem with it? Uh, if it's not normal, you send them an email like, hey, uh, we noticed that, uh, uh, we noticed, uh, maybe the, you find this article or this uh, PDF with help uh, uh, convenient, or maybe we can help you on a schedule call, whatever. Um, low reviews is also a really big warning sign. So uh, be aware. Uh, and if you're having more body in your company, uh, you can set up uh, NPS, uh, Net Promoter Score program, and you uh, measure a lot of touch points. All is a big word, but most touch points with your customers, they will uh, uh, give you a rating or a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, then you know, hey, this is process is working well, or this process is uh, lacking uh, the expectations uh, of customers. This was it for today.